Okay, so we live in a world where there's no eye health practitioners or limited numbers. Spectacles is fairly unaffordable to the poor and there's a lack of facilities. A consequence of this is that there are 625 million people who are blind or vision impaired simply because they cannot get access to a pair of spectacles. This gentleman could, in, from Mozambique could get complex cataract surgery but could not access a pair of spectacles after his cataract surgery and was forced to make up his own. But there's an increasingly worrying trend developing as well. We published a paper recently where we showed that by the year 2050, half of the world's population, more than half, will be short-sighted. And about 10% of the world's population will have what we call high myopia, which predisposes you to permanent vision impairment and blindness. Because our kids in the digital age are spending more time indoors and less time outdoors, this is a consequence of that change. So if we want to reach the seven billion in our world, we need to look at the public sector, the NGO, which is the poorest of the poor, the private sector, those who have resources. We need to look at the NGO work, but importantly, a new space that's developing is the social enterprise space. But the Brian Alden Vision Institute sustains itself and achieves our social mission by conducting translational research through which we generate income. We then invest that income in further research as well as support our social cause, which is addressing the need for eye exams and glasses in the world and addressing uncorrected refractive error. Through this approach, we have been able to, over the years, raise in excess of $300 million by selling royalties, by selling intellectual property and generating income. And we've thus been able to use this money to make a difference. And it also allows us to be free of a donor-driven strategy, which you know is a big challenge in our world. It allows us to set up clinics in partnership with governments, and we've done this across the world, and we've worked in 54 countries. We've set up about 400 vision centers with government in public hospitals that has created access to eye exams and glasses. We've also been able to set up child eye health programs in schools and create greater access for children in terms of screening as well as the provision of spectacles. We've been able to train eye health practitioners. We've trained 130,000 practi pract eye care practitioners across the world to build sustainability and then created a global resource center to access spectacles for a couple of dollars and make that available to our partners and others so that affordable supply can complement the programmatic work. We have in countries like Pakistan and elsewhere worked with partners and set up what we call a social franchise model We've worked with LRBT, which is a hospital group in Pakistan, as well as CHIP, which is a women's empowerment group, allowed them to set up optical shops in a franchise model but targeting the lower end of the market. And through this, they've been able to generate income to su subsidize, to firstly sustain the operation, but also to subsidize other activities. In Kenya, we had a surgeon who returned to his uh, ancestral home, set up a cataract center and couldn't sustain it. We came in, partnered with him, set up an optical center through the social franchise model. He now cross-subsidized the cataract service by the income that he's generating through the sale of spectacles while still being affordable to the local community. But entrepreneurship is not all. Partnership helps as well. And we partnered, for example, in Tanzania here with government to improve facilities. So we may contribute to equipment, put in systems, supply chains, etc but make sure that government contributes in terms of facilities and most importantly, employing the human resources. We've also partnered with institutions like universities in Mozambique, Malawi, Vietnam to produce the human resources so that we as NGOs or social enterprises become obsolete in the long run. And this is the graduation of the first batch of optometrists in Malawi only five years ago. So partnership is a powerful tool, and all of these have been great, but we have not been able to reach the scale up that we needed. And fortunately for us, we were approached by Bono from U2, who offered us $8.5 million uh, with a company called Revo, which is a sunglass company. And we then said, look, let's look at this differently. Let's set up a child eye health program using a systems approach. And we brought together 70 organizations across the world, both eye care and other development organizations, we reached 10 million children in the first year. We're targeting 50 million by 2050. But along the way, we are involved in policy change. We're in health promotion material. We're doing research. For example, we've shown 
that $269 billion per annum in lost productivity occurs as a result of, of adults not being able to see because they cannot access a pair of glasses. So with this, we hope to effect change in a more sustainable way. And it doesn't sound like a very sexy development agenda, but it allows adults to earn, children to learn, and it's a powerful tool to address intergenerational poverty. Thank you.